I made a video about a 1080p action camera the other day, and so far most of the comments have been, why 1080p and not 1080p 60 or 4K? Sure, let's address that. Here you go. This is the 4K Sports Ultra HD camera from Icontex. Not really anything else, model name or anything like that on the packaging other than that. But this does run for about $79.99 over on Amazon if you'd like to check it out for yourself. As you can see here on the packaging, 4K, it has voice prompts, 20 megapixel stills, adjustable angle so it can be wide or not so wide, and a gyro for anti-shake. Again, addressing some of the things people were commenting on. Several comments were about the shakiness of the last camera and being so wide and kind of fisheye. This says it's waterproof to 30 meters, it has Wi-Fi built in, a 6G multi-layer filter, and it can do time lapses. And it does mention H.264. I've seen comments about H.265 and this does not mention that specifically. I should also point out that it does say 4K, but it also says 4K 24 frames a second. So it's not gonna be 4K 30 or anything high resolution like that. It's 4K 24, so it's kind of cinematic, but it's an action cam. Let's open the box. It's a box within a box, and inside of that box is a camera. Camera off to the side. Accessories. Oh, buddy. I said it before and I'll say it again. GoPro accessories are like cockroaches. And actually, just looking through these very quickly, I think they're identical to the ones that I got with the previous 1080p camera. So basically, you've got a micro USB cable, a bunch of clips and GoPro mounts, just like an entire table full, if you can see here. Some zip ties, a microfiber cloth, some Velcro, the waterproof casing that it actually comes in, as well as a separate waterproof back, just in case you need a spare, and a manual in case you want to go through that. It does mention it has a two inch screen on the back. On the front, you've got the power mode button, as well as a lens. On the side, you've got micro USB, the microphone, HDMI output, and a micro SD card slot. On the other side, you have up, down, and Wi-Fi button with speaker hole. On the top is the OK button and an indicator. On the bottom is a buckle and the battery cover. A list of your included accessories if you'd like to pause and take a look at that. And then just info on how you get into all the modes and how you do all these certain things. Cool, moving on. So here's the camera. On the outside of the waterproof housing, it's got a little protector in case you want to protect your waterproof housing. There's a protector on the back as well. Then we'll go ahead and attempt to open the housing. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. Now straight out of the package, there is a screen protector on here. I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off too, just so you can see it. Over here on the side, like we said, micro SD, USB, and HDMI, mini HDMI. On the bottom, you have your buckle and your battery removal. On the front, there's your power button. On the side, there's up and down, and one of them is a Wi-Fi button with a speaker. Again, microphone's over here, and your OK button on top. Let's go ahead and power it on. Oh, and it's already on. There's the interface. It says FHD P60, so that should be 1080p60. So if I go ahead and press down, it actually turns off the microphone. If I press up, it does Wi-Fi stuff. So it's turning on Wi-Fi right now. Gives you some Wi-Fi info there. You can also turn Wi-Fi off. If I hit OK, it says insert SD card. If I hit the power button, that should switch the mode. So now we're in photo mode. That says no files, so it was trying to view files. And then we're in the menu. So resolution. Right now it's in FHD 60, but you can see it can go up to QHD P30, which should be 2K or 2.7K, one or the other, and UHD P24. So you can go to 4K at 24 frames a second, or you can do QHD at 30 frames a second. You've got up and down on this. You can go down all the way as low as QVGA P30, if you're so inclined, or VGA P240, so 240 frames a second there, or HD, which would be 720p at 120 frames a second. So lots of options there. I'm gonna stick to FHD P60 for now because that's what I'm in. Loop recording, gyroscope. Gyroscope's gonna be on. WDR, time-lapse record. You can set your how many milliseconds between the frames. 100, 200, 500, one second and five seconds. Not a whole lot of options there, but it's still there. Motion detection on and off. Record audio on and off. Date stamp off. <laughs> Angle, oh, this is where you'd set your, your wide angle or not. So 170 down to 70. Diving mode, on or off, which according to the box, diving mode is red light compensation, diving without the red filter, so it can take wonderful videos and photos when you're in the water. Might be useful if I was going scuba diving or snorkeling or something. You've also got night scene and a self timer. Image size, you can take it up to 20 megapixels. Burst mode, image quality, We'll go up to fine on that. Sharpness, you can turn it up or down. White balance, you can change that, that's very nice. Color settings, you can make it black and white or sepia. Sepia, however you wanna say it. ISO settings, all the way up to 400. Exposure compensation, anti-shake, 
delete things, protect things, Wi-Fi settings, Wi-Fi SSID settings, Wi-Fi password settings, date and time settings, and auto power off. Beep sound, please turn off, all much better. Voice prompts, on or off. On screen display, on or off, yes, on. Car accessory, so you can make this into car mode. Language, TV mode, TV, screen saver, so many settings. That's actually a good thing in my opinion. Format, default settings, version, and we're done. And with that, let me stick a card in here. We'll do a quick video sample. And I will say, just looking around the sides, you can see there's a lot of light leak from the LCD here on the side, as well as around the bottom. I don't think it's a big deal or anything. I just thought I would go ahead and point that out. And I've gone ahead and stuck a card in. Let's see how it works. Video start. Video start. When I press the button, it does say that. I can turn that off though. And here's what the video looks like. This is 170 degree wide angle. This is 1080p 60. So this can go up to 4K if we want to, but currently, again, 1080p 60, so it matches the rest of the video. Video stop. I'm turning those voice prompts off. That's obnoxious. Let's go ahead and take a still, though, just for fun. And it gives you a little noise there when it's happening. But it looks like I'm actually able to come in here and view video a video. Start. And it did put that sound in there, too. So I will definitely be spending a lot more time with this. I'm gonna see what other things I can do with it. Like I said, there are lots of accessories to use with it. And it looks like a lot of the issues that people were having with the 1080p one that I just took a look at the other day have actually been addressed with this one. The one thing that this does not have that the other one had that was slightly cheaper is this one does not come with a carrying case. So it's got this box absolutely cram-packed full of accessories and no case to put them in. I will probably be putting this camera into the case of the other one, just going to go ahead and be honest there. But so far, for 80 bucks, this is absolutely an amazing deal in my opinion, just first glance. You'll have to let me know how the video footage looks. I'll probably include some additional footage right here. Alrighty, so here's a quick test video from the 4K Icontex action camera. We are shooting at 1080p 60. I've got my studio lights on and I'm just sort of standing here. So you can get a little bit of a sense of what the audio sounds like and what the video would look like in pretty decent lighting. But, let's take a quick walk around the rest of the house. We'll see what it looks like in some various lighting scenarios. Apologies in advance for any sort of handling sounds. As I move around, it might get touched and it might make some noise from all the plastic. This is a, a sort of a dimly lit room. It's not dark or anything. Now, I may also have to come back and do a couple more tests with this because this does have so many different field of view options. Here in the living room, we've got pretty decently dim lighting but it looks it looks like it's grainy but not as bad as it could be not bad here's what human face looks like in this setup so again dimly lit but could definitely be worse let's walk through the kitchen which is even more dimly lit all right so there you go nice dimly lit it adjusted very very quickly which was good but again grainy and this is what it looks like outdoors out back not bad. Doesn't look like it's too shaky. Can't complain. Some nice up-close video of some flowers. These are really bright orangish red in real life. On the camera they're looking kind of white. <laughs> it's looking like the color representation may not be great, but that could just be the screen. Anyway, just a quick sample. Hope you enjoyed. And just as a quick point of comparison, this is the absolute tightest angle it says it offers. This is the 70 degree field of view, so this should be significantly more zoomed in. There you go. But so far, initial impressions, I'm liking the build quality. It's very rubberized around the outside. I like the screen on the back. I like the features and functions it's got, and the fact that it has all of these white balance color settings, wide angle to not so wide angle. Lots of great features and options in here. So again, link to where you can find this will be found down in the video description as usual. Remember to leave a thumbs up down below if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more. We'll see you again in the very next video.